Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, Zorin 15 has come out recently, and we want to have a look at it. And uh, this is a um, this is a distro that I've looked at in the past, and I never really recommended it, despite it was easy to use. For the one primary reason is that it was a distro that's always come with Wine pre-installed, and uh, you should never install Wine on a distribution out of the box. That's somewhere between the last time I looked at it, which I don't remember what version that was, and now 15, Wine is no longer installed by default. So, hey, that's good. Um, there are a few other little things in here, though, that uh, I put a little warning tag on, but not enough to say don't ever use it. Just some things to think about. Now, before we dive in, also, does it matter which distro you use? It really doesn't. Find something that works for you. The reason I do these reviews is so that you can get a chance to see what the various options are out there in case you're having problems or you're looking to switch to, Win um, to Linux. Wow, to Windows, no. Um, in case you're trying to switch to Linux, uh, just to give you a variety of different things to look into. And Zorin has always been one of these that it makes it, it's a very good system to switch from because they have Mac clone modes and Windows clone modes built into it. And if you pay a little extra, you can get even more advanced themes built in. So uh, over at their website, which is ZorinOS.com, we can get the information. I do notice a few things out of the box. Um, this is a EU company and they're running a foul of GDPR. This is not a GDPR cookie notice. And there's actually some other things that they do in here that, uh, that make me scratch my head. Um, but ultimately the system that they're, they're, uh, coming out with a lot better, uh, text since the last time I looked at their system, they used to say, Oh, you can run windows programs on here, which isn't always true because you can't run all Windows programs on Linux with Wine. So I'm very happy to see that they have downplayed the Wine, they've downplayed that, they're not installing it by default, and that for me is a huge win. I got though down here, of course, resistant to viruses, which is true, um, rock solid and reliable, based on Ubuntu, it is, it is good. Um, so you can get the traditional version, which is based on GNOME. It is a highly modified GNOME, completely different than the GNOME you might be used to. You also can get the light version, which is based on XFCE. This is an interesting statement down here, though. Privacy, your data belongs to you. Zorin OS doesn't collect sensitive personal data. So advertisers and governments can't spy on your activity. Because it is open source, anyone can view its source code and ensure its security. It also comes with a firewall so you can stay safe. This made me stop and look at this and go, what was going on? So I went over to the privacy policy on Zorn OS. And uh, a lot of this privacy policy is just the basic things that you'd find on any website. You know, hey, we use analytics. Hey, we have cookies, things like this, all of this kind of stuff. But we do have this line. It collects information different ways from our website's software, including Zorin OS. So I read through this privacy policy. Like I said, most of this is just the basic stuff that you would expect. Hey, obviously they collect data if you create an account. Obviously they collect data if you sign up for a newsletter. Obviously they collect data if you make, uh, make payments. All of these are things that don't really bother me. They just deal with third party stuff. But the thing when you get um, down here, we have online usage and logs, visiting the websites, of course. Um, this is basic information, uh, all related to that. But down here, the last two items deal with the operating system. So error reports contains an anonymous unique identifier. This is nothing specifically new. You can choose not to send error reports. But this one here is something that I would like to see this indicated on the installation, have the ability to install or deinstall this. So when you are using Zorin OS, your computer occasionally sings us a ping. Uh, and this, by the way, is not unique to Zorin. A few other different distros do this. I think Ubuntu does by default as well. Um, it includes anonymous identif uh, a anonymous unique identifier for your computer. This is part of that fingerprinting that I make a big deal of saying, you know, activists, journalists, people in high sensitive um, jobs should not be using anything that runs these types of anonymous pings because that can identify your computer. It can identify a variety of different things, even though, oh, it's just a unique identifier 
that unique identifier is enough to say that is this computer. We can confirm it was on the internet. That sounds a little tinfoil hatty, but it is worthy of consideration. You can remove this package, Zorin OS Census, from the computer and it will stop doing that. I would really like to see this displayed in the distribution before I would actually be comfortable recommending it to anybody. Now, as far as the release notes of this one, um, they did increase the, the GNOME shell to 3.30. I'm not sure why they didn't use 3.32. Um, it might just be uh, because it's based on Ubuntu 18.04, and uh, I just don't know if that has 3.32. I haven't been following the development or not. Uh, that's probably the reason why. Um, they do have this new application called Zorin Connect. So Zorin Connect is very much like the KDE, key, uh, KDE Connect application where you can sync phone notifications, browse photos. This is something that I don't like is that the only way they're giving you this information is on the Google Play Store. Well, if you're not a person who uses the Google Play Store, you got to go hunt. It does turn out this application is on F-Droid, so you can still get it from F-Droid. You don't have to get it from the Google Play Store. I would like to see... Uh, see in their release announcements that you can get the application other places than the Google Play Store. That would be very, very handy. Uh, we do have a new desktop theme, which is uh, bright, white, and flat. That may or may not be your thing, but they also have this new setting, and we're going to talk about this new setting when we get into the OS. Um, they have a new setting that will adapt throughout the day. Um, it'll basically shift based upon, you know, is it morning, is it afternoon, is it twilight, is it evening? It's going to shift the color hues. There's something interesting about that I'm going to point out when we get there. Um, and then, of course, um, they have a variety of layouts. So the touch layout is very much like the, the Mac for if you're running this on some type of of tablet -y type thing. They did redesign some apps. So LibreOffice now by default runs that horrible ribbon crap that uh, uh, Microsoft Office uses. I'm, I mean, that's the setting in LibreOffice. So they've just toggled that setting on. That's not a big deal at all. Um, they did include in this one flat packs. So now Zorin will include snaps and flat packs out of the box. So that is good. And then there's just a few other little minor improvements as well. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and uh, jump on into the Zorin operating system itself and have ourselves a quick look about what, uh, what we are going to get. Okay, so we are running this test inside of a virtual machine, so keep that in mind. It does seem to run very snappy, which generally is what I find uh, find is something we get inside of uh, GNOME 3.30 and higher. Um, that doesn't uh, uh, that doesn't bother me at all. Like I said, though, uh, while it is based on GNOME 3.30, it is a completely different theming. So here is our login screen. Uh, we can click down in here, we can go Zorin, or we can go Zorin with Wayland if we want to. So let's just go ahead and log on into Zorin. And it should give us a, a good full screen, and it is a very attractive desktop out of the box. Um, I did not make any adjustments to this. Um, I installed it and I ran updates on it. So we're looking at this exactly as you would install it. So by default, we get a modern Windows type theme. We have a menu here that is a start menu type feel to it. Um, so we can click into these individual settings and access the variety of different tools. We have um, our basic um, account folders over here, uh, software settings, activities. Let's see which settings panel this is. There's two different settings panels. So this is our main settings panel. There's also a uh, Zorin appearance, which you can see a link to it right here. Okay, we also have these guys here are more or less your um, uh, your pinned applications, and then everything else is is fairly standard. So what we actually want to look at specifically is let's start by going into the Zorin appearance. So inside of our Zorin appearance. This is one of the things that uh, basically Zorin is Ubuntu with uh, this layout panel. This is really one of those few things that really sets it seriously apart from Ubuntu. 
hey, we have flat packs and we have this nice panel. Admittedly though, this panel is very nice. For a new user coming to Linux from Windows, this is the type of thing that can really make the difference. All right, so if I wanna turn on a variety of icons on the desktop, they are right here available, so I can do that. I'm not sure why they stack on top of each other. Uh, probably because the desktop icons inside of uh, inside of um, the GNOME 3.30 have not classically been all that great. Um, since GNOME has been pulling desktop icons off, it's been a patch job putting it back on. We can enable animations, we can toggle the, um, the minimize, maximize uh, buttons over here. There's not a maximize on this window here, but uh, there are on any other basic window. So you can see that we have this setting over here. All right, we also though have the ability to switch to a more traditional layout. So these guys now, instead of being like pinned, now they are like a quick launch bar and all of our applications spread out over here. Everything else is pretty much the same. And we have this layout over here, which will turn the thing kind of into a Mac type view. So there it goes. It does appear to be quite a bit clunkier. Um, in other words, what I mean by clunkier, not the functionality, but you can see that this thing's just kind of hovering up above. It doesn't blend seamlessly in like, like some other systems would, but you know, we have the options at least. Now, if you were to pay for the pack, you get more themes in there so you can make some adjustments. You also can change all your highlighting colors like this, uh, which is actually a very nice way to just do some, some basic adjustments to the system. And then we can go with the light mode or with the dark mode options. Now, the one mode, this center mode here, is the one that, um, that toggles your ability to change it throughout the day. When we click on this, it actually wants you to turn on your location services. So this functionality needs location services to be enabled in order to set this. I don't really like that. So I don't really care for the for uh, all of this, you know, red, red light and blue light and all this stuff anyway. So this isn't a feature I would use, but it just raises those questions. You know, why can't I just toggle some settings and uh, do it automatically? Now we also have these guys down here and you'll notice as I pulled that down, if you select any of these, you can't really go back to what that was initially. It's like, oh, how do you do that? Well, you actually clear that by coming back and reclicking on these. That resets those. So that wasn't entirely clear at first. Um, we do have, you know, different shell themes and things like this we can pick from. Um, so if you want to go back to, to the old 95 look, yeah, look at that bad boy. That's not really 95 look. This is way too stylish for 95. I mean, come on. All right, we also have our fonts. Nothing special in here. You can just set your different fonts and your font sizes. And then our panel, we can turn it to the top. We can turn it to the bottom. And we can adjust the size of the panel here. I think that the panel by default is a little bit too big. Let's go with 32. Um, here is activities buttons. So um, this guy here will give you kind of like your Mac type mode. This is your basic GNOME, uh, GNOME type activity button. Or you can do your show desktop button, which is going to um, minimize. I think it's going to minimize your windows. I did not actually test that. Let's see if that minimizes windows or if that just throws them all out of the way. Um, all right, so there we are. Now let's hit this button and then pull one of these back up. So yeah, it does look as though that that does minimize all buttons. It doesn't just throw your windows out of the way. All right, so we have the auto hide ability, so we can do that. One of the things that I noticed is that inside of this mode here, there is no way to separate the panel from the status bar, which is something I think some people might be looking for. My guess is that that is going to be a feature that you're going to find inside of, uh, inside of those extra themes if you actually buy the system. So that is kind of what we get there. Um, everything else is is pretty much gnome. It's it's styled nicely. It's not my uh, not my desire this type of uh, type of look, but it I'm okay with it. I'm not bothered by the the theme enough to think that it sucks. Um, we have some basic wallpapers here. There's probably going to be some Zorin specific ones as well, but we do have some other nice wallpapers in here to pick from. That is entirely too bright. My apologies for blinding everybody. There we are. There's a, there's a nice little one. 
All right, everything in here is just going to be your basic, um, uh, your basic uh, GNOME settings, so we're not going to go over anything in here. Um, as far as our applications, uh, out of the box, uh, we get our some of the basic applications. There's the new to-do list. There's weathers. We have maps uh, inside of. Oh, well, okay, I guess we're booting up Office. Um, inside of our games, we just have a few basic games installed. Uh, graphics, we have GIMP, LibreDraw, Simple Scan. All right, so here is LibreDraw. You can see that we have our panels set up here with this ribbon format. Um, don't let that be a reason to not like the thing. You actually can always come in and um, set that back. I gotta remember exactly how, but. Um, uh, what we need is, we need our menus, I don't know, we'll figure it out. I think I actually talk about that in a video, how to how to toggle these these settings up there. I'm not remembering off the top. Uh, it just has to do with, uh, we need to get our entire menu up across the top, and uh, I think it's this menu here. There we are, so there's your standard toolbar there. So if you want to bring your standard toolbar back, you can do that. So that will apply to this. It is very bright. I, it's too bright for me. Um, so I would definitely, if I were using this, I'd have to do a lot of theming. We do actually have the full LibreOffice suite. That's something not all Linux distributions have by default. Uh, most of them do not have, uh, like they don't have um, uh, databasing by default. Admittedly, not a lot of people use it. They do use Evolution uh, for the email, and the Evolution on this build actually is already set up to sync with a Microsoft Exchange. So if that is uh, if that is a uh, something you need is that Microsoft Exchange, then this might be something you might want to uh, might want to look into. Sound and video, we have Brasaria, PTV, uh, Cheese, and System Tools. So we do have this, the full suite of System Tools, which is very nice. Here's our Zorn Connect, um, and then our Utilities, we have everything there. So overall, what is my, my general thought on the distribution? Let's have a look at our system resources real quick. So we're using 1.6 gigs of memory, but you can see even in a virtual machine, this is very responsive. It is being a, it is being a, a pretty nice distribution. So what's my overall thought on Zorin OS right now? Well, a lot of benefit comes from the fact that they're no longer installing Wine by default. That for me was the deal breaker in the past because to sit there and say this thing is, you know, this thing is much more secure and then to install Wine on default, well, you're just installing the ability for a Windows virus to run. Um, and yeah, I realize there's some containerized differences, but why run the risk unless you absolutely need to install it? Can you still install it? Absolutely. So that is a good thing. Um, on the bad end, I don't like how it's starting to do the automated pings. Um, it is, uh, they're not telling us if you don't read that privacy policy, you don't know it's doing that. And that might be something you want to tell people about. As far as those, the general usability, I wouldn't really have a problem. If somebody says, you know, I want to switch to Linux. Uh, I'm not super duper concerned about the privacy stuff. I'm not a high risk person. I would say, you know, this is certainly one that you might look into. It has the ability to do just enough system settings. It's it's GNOME, but it's a little bit of a different GNOME. It has a lot of tools. It's going to have a lot of your familiar layouts out of the box. Now, would I wipe my system and run this and go, this is the latest, greatest new distro? Uh, no. If you're in the middle of shopping for distro, definitely check it out. Uh, but if what you are already using is perfectly working for you, don't bother uh, throwing a monkey wrench into the thing and installing something else. And that's going to be the advice I'd give you on any distribution. We don't need to keep jumping. We need to find something that works for us, that works for our workflow, and stick with it. So there's my initial thoughts and my analysis of Zorin OS, particularly for a new user. Let me know what you think in the comments down below.